So this is the package that the Trezor One wallet comes in. And I want to quickly show it to you because it has an important feature. These seals right here, one on the top and one on the back. And you shouldn't use a hardware wallet that didn't come up with these seals because this guarantees your device is original and hasn't been tampered with. If these seals are off, you risk of being hacked. You risk your device not being safe to use. This box is sealed so well, it's very hard to remove the hardware device from it and put it back. I have to actually destroy the package in order to get access to the device. How to get started? You'll find the instructions here and I'll go with you through the instructions in a minute. But the most important part are these pieces of paper where you are supposed to write down the recovery backup phrase that we're going to receive when we open up the device for the first time. Do not disclose this to anybody. Keep your recovery seed in a safe place and never make a digital copy of it as it may significantly decrease the security of your hardware wallet. There are two of them. You are supposed to fill them both and keep them separated in different places in case something happens to one of them. You'll have the other one ready to recover your wallet, to recover your funds. If you lose access to this personal recovery seed, you lose access to your cryptocurrency and there is no way to recover those funds. This is the Trezor wallet, the Trezor One wallet. Let's go and see how we can set up this for the first time. First thing you'll have to do is take your cable, your USB cable, plug it in, in your device and the other side in your computer. And you'll see that your device will start to power up and the instructions are quite clear. Welcome, please visit Trezor.io slash start. And we are going to do just that. I have to choose my device to continue. In this case, I have the Trezor one. As you can see, first warning is exactly what I told you before. Be sure you have the seals on your package. Otherwise, you are not supposed to use that wallet. Let's continue to the wallet. It will ask me to connect the Trezor if I haven't done that yet. Or check for devices. Since I already connected the device, I'm going to click on check for devices. Connect. The browser asked me to allow wallet.trezor.io to open Bitcoin links. I don't really want to do that. Sometimes hacker can interact with your browser and change the wallet that you are supposed to send the funds to. So I'm going to block it and manually manage the addresses, the Bitcoin addresses that I'm going to send the funds to. So I'm going to block this for now. Because nothing happens in my browser, I'm going to go down here and it says device not recognized. Try installing the Trezor Bridge. Let's do that. As you can see, Trezor Bridge is a new communication tool to facilitate the connection between your Trezor and your internet browser. Trezor Bridge is available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux devices. So depending on your computer, download the appropriate one. I'm going to install this. Please disconnect Trezor. I'm doing that. Disconnected. Okay. And I'm going to select close while start Trezor Bridge is checked. I'm going to refresh the page. And now I'm going to connect my Trezor again. My Windows machine says it's setting up my Trezor device. I'm going to wait for it to do that. Now Windows lets me know that the device is ready and Trezor is set up and ready to go. If you're on the Brave browser, be sure to turn the shields off for this particular website. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect to the Trezor wallet. After you connected your Trezor to the computer, you'll see that your Trezor actually has no software on it. You'll have to install the device firmware here. That's to be sure that you're installing the correct software and that your device is safe. You'll see on the device that the new firmware has been successfully installed and you'll have to reconnect the device to continue. After you do that, it will say that update finished successfully. Please reconnect the device, so reconnect it again. And after that's done, you'll be able to continue with the setup on your computer. And here I have two options, either to create a new wallet or to recover an existing wallet. To recover an existing wallet, you'll need the recovery seed of any other wallet. Maybe you had a Trezor in the past or a Ledger device and you want to switch to Trezor or a mobile wallet that you're trying to move to this hardware device. Or in case you actually lose your device, your Trezor, or it gets stolen, then you'll use the recovery seed that we're going to create in a minute to actually restore and recover the wallet. Let's continue by creating a new wallet. But even though it shows up that I have an account right here, we need to find out the recovery seed phrase. But apparently there's a new firmware to update on the device. So that's what I'm going to do first. Be sure to do these steps before you actually move any funds to the device. And after you make sure that the device is updated and safe to use, then send funds to this device. Whenever you want to do a firmware update, be sure that you have the backup phrase accessible in case your Trezor fails the update and it doesn't work as expected anymore. But because this is the first time we are setting this up, we don't have to do that yet. To update the firmware on this device, 
but have to follow these steps. Disconnect the Trezor first and then when connecting hold both buttons pressed. So I'm going to disconnect the device first. Is this connected? I make sure I press on these two buttons at the same time. And while I hold the buttons, I connect the device. I'll check that I have the recovery set seed with me, but I didn't generate that yet. So in this case, it's safe to continue and I'll update to the latest version. It will ask me to confirm the firmware installed on Trezor and I will click on continue on my device. It says to confirm the firmware fingerprint on Trezor and what that means, it means that this number here must match the one that shows up on the device. Make sure it does and then click on continue on the hardware device. When it says on the device that the firmware has been successfully installed and that you are safe to unplug your Trezor, do that. Just remember that after you reconnect it, it will say update finished successfully and you'll have to reconnect it again. Now that I have a fully updated Trezor device, let's make sure that it's properly backed up. So I'm going to click on create a backup in three minutes. Your recovery seed is the backup key to all your cryptocurrencies and applications. Your recovery seed can only be displayed once. Never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online. That means don't take a screenshot, don't take a photo of it. Keep your recovery seed in a safe place. Satoshi Labs cannot be held responsible for security liabilities or financial losses resulting from not following security instructions described here. Click on this link right here and learn more about how you can keep your hardware wallet and cryptocurrency safe. Avoid these things, don't take a photo of your recovery seed, don't store it on the computer, don't save it in a cloud storage and never upload it to the internet. The only moment that you need this recovery phrase is as you saw earlier to restore in case you want to set up a new wallet in case your device gets stolen or you lose your device that's the only moment when you'll need the recovery phrase to regain access to your coins after your old wallet is not accessible anymore to continue check this box right here if you understand and agree and then click on continue next step is to write down your recovery seed on your device you will now see a unique combination of 12 18 or 24 words this will allow you to recover your funds in case you lose the device. The order of the words is very important. Actually, it's critical. You have to have these words in the right order, otherwise they won't work. So please write down all these words carefully. Since I'm not supposed to share this with you, I'm going to show you only the first word and you can see it on the hardware device, the first word and to continue I'll click next. What you'll have to do is take the piece of paper that came in the box and write the words in the correct order. Make sure you understand your own writing. Make sure you don't use a pencil that can get erased. Continue with the process until you have all the words written down. After you filled in both papers, make sure you keep them safe and secure, separated from each other, keep them away from thieves, from prying eyes, from fire, from flood, but don't forget where you put it. After you filled in the papers, on the device the seed phrase will show up again to make sure that you have the right words, the correct words written down. So be sure to check that. After you've done that, select finish on your device and on your computer screen it will appear that you have successfully backed up your device. Click on continue. Then you create a pin lock for your device so no one else can get access to your wallet. Confirm the action on your Trezor device. And by looking at the hardware device, you'll see the layout of the numbers there. And to have the pin of 1, 2, 3, 4, I'll do like this on the computer. And your pin can have up to nine digits let's continue with four i'll click on enter pin as you can see on the device the order of the number changed so to confirm the one two three four pin i have to click on the appropriate boxes on my computer one two three four i'll click on enter pin and my pin is set of course i can change this pin whenever i want i'm not going to keep the one two three four one let's click on continue let's give a name to my trezor device let's call it trezor one Confirm to continue and I'll have to confirm the action on my Trezor wallet. I'll click on continue. Now it asks me to bookmark in the browser. This will protect you from phishing attacks because usually these phishing attacks use a different address that is very close to the original one. I mean this URL right here in the browser and by creating a bookmark in the browser and using that to access the wallet this way you are making sure that you are not accessing the wrong url the one that is going to steal your funds always make sure that you are on wallet.trezor.io but if you create a bookmark in the browser that will be safer because it will be a shortcut directly to the correct website and if you select ctrl d on a windows machine you'll be able to bookmark the website from here i'll click on done then click on continue and if you want to keep up with the newsletter from Trezor you'll sign up here but I'm going to skip this step for now. Continue and that's how you back up your Trezor device and finally we 
click on finish. Now that I have a properly backed up Trezor device, let's receive some coins. You can continue to manage your funds here in the browser or you can download the Trezor Suite application and this is what I'm going to do. This application is made by Trezor and it's meant to make your crypto management easier and safer. The application is available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux and I'm going to download it. After that I'm going to install it. And finally, I'm going to click on finish while run Trezor Suite is selected. And this is the application that I'm using to manage my Trezor wallet. If I can select it, I usually don't share my data even if it's anonymous. Since I already set up the device, I'm going to click on access suite. And this warning is to let you know that you should continue only if you set up your Trezor yourself, which you did if you followed my steps earlier. So this is the application. As you can see right here, it's still in beta, but this will become the main application to manage your Trezor funds. So let's go ahead and send some Bitcoin to this wallet. I'm going to click on receive and here you can see my bitcoin addresses i'm gonna click on show full address this is the address that i can copy or that i can scan with the qr code make sure that the address that appears on the screen is the exact one that appears on the device also enable qr code on the hardware device you just click on the button where it says qr code and you can see the qr code there and finally you'll click on confirm now i can click on copy address on my screen and continue sending the funds to this address i'm going to send some funds for my ledger wallet so for that i'm going to paste the address here make sure that the address is correct at least look at the first four characters of the address and the last four or five ones to confirm that you are sending to the correct address then i'm going to click on continue let's say i want to send 0 0.01 bitcoin i'm gonna leave the network here as it is and click on continue I just sent the transaction from my ledger wallet to Trezor and I already saw some change here in the app. I'm going to close this. As you can see, the funds are already showing up in my Trezor wallet. If I click on overview, you can see here a pending transaction that is coming to this wallet. And when this is confirmed and not pending anymore, I'll be able to send the funds and spend the funds however I want. If you click on the pending transaction, you'll see some more details about it. When it was first seen, what is the tr transaction ID, what's the amount, what's the fee. And if you click on this button, open in Block Explorer, it will open up the page with the blockchain explorer where you can see all the details about your transaction as you can see here it's still unconfirmed so the funds are not yet in my wallet the bitcoin is not yet in my wallet and i have to wait for confirmation for the transaction to be complete now that i have funds in my account as you can see this transaction is complete and it says confirm i can spend these funds and i can send the funds to any address that i want and for that i'm going to click on send and i have to select an address let's send it back to my ledger wallet this is the address i have to send the funds to i'm gonna paste it here then I'm going to send the maximum amount and because I'm not in a rush, I'm going to click the low transaction fee. Notice that this may take up to 13 hours, but the fee is really small. Otherwise, if I want the transaction to be confirmed as fast as possible, I'm going to click on high. This will be confirmed in 10 minutes but it will cost me three dollars worth of Bitcoin. So let's continue with the low transaction fee. I'm going to click on review and send. And to continue, I'll have to verify this transaction on my hardware wallet. And for that, I'll click the confirm button on the device. There is a double check. I really want to send this amount of Bitcoin. I select confirm again. And after I confirm the transaction on the device, I can finally click send on my computer. And now the Bitcoin is on its way. If I click here on view details, I'm going to see the pending transaction sending Bitcoin. In case you want to use other coins, you can come here to my accounts. And from this list, you can see what other coins are available. If you want an Ethereum account, you'll just come here, select Ethereum and click on find my Ethereum account. And just like for Bitcoin, you click on receive Ethereum, you'll find the address here and you'll follow the same steps to send Ethereum to this wallet. Let me know in the comments below how easy it was to follow this tutorial. Give it a rating from 1 to 10. If it was hard to follow, give it a 1. If it was very easy to follow, give it a 10. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure that you'll like the next one as well. So be sure to check the video that I'm posting on the screen right now and I'll see you there.